Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 to 22. Matthew 15, uh, chapter 22, verse 15 to 22. We continue to read the book of Matthew, and this is the middle of the last week of Jesus' ministry on earth um, before he was crucified. Um, we're going to read verse 15 to 22. We're going to hear God's word all together. Here's the word of God. And the Pharisees went and plotted to entangle him in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what you think, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Amen. Um, we need to know why Jesus... Uh, was confronted by uh, Pharisees' disciples and Herodians. Um, even though he was kind of confronted by them, um, he was able to teach really important lesson uh, concerning the kingdom of God. So we need to pay our attention to uh, this text. This is really practical and realistic uh, lesson that we need to we could have. Um, Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. You need to know that. Um, he comes to you with the sweet things to manipulate you, to deceive you. So when you live your daily lives, you need to be sensitive to his scheme. That's why we need to have the eyes of spiritual discernment. We need to know how to discern if it is Satan's scheme or um, not. Other than that, we have no choice but to be easily deceived and manipulated. So I want you to really be sensitive to uh, what Satan, what enemy is doing in your life. We are living in this world with a dual citizenship. I'm not talking about the United States. <laughs> um, you know, even though you are born in here, uh, your parents are Korean then you have dual citizenship. So you need to give up one uh, Korean citizenship if you don't want to go to army. Uh, I'm not talking about that, but uh, kingdom of the world and kingdom of God. So we're living in these two kingdoms and you have dual citizenship. Many Christians tend to be confused to understand this concept. This is visible. This is invisible. They heard about God's teaching and God's principle and you know gospel and everything, but they're living in this visible kingdom, kingdom of the world, right? They don't know how to apply the principle and gospel into this. So they are so confused with how to live with this dual 
uh, citizenship. Today, uh, Jesus will clarify that uh, to us. But for that, uh, we need to kind of open our eyes to see what Satan is doing in this kingdom of the world. The scheme. Scheme of our enemy. Jesus was confronted by disciples of Pharisees along with Herodians. So it's really odd combination. But um, the, he was confronted by them. If you look at verse uh, 15, it says, Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. Pharisees went back and they had some time to plot how to entangle him in his words. So remember, Jesus gave three parables and he rebuked the Pharisees and Pharisees, um, religious leaders. And they were so embarrassed by that. So even though uh, they wanted to really do something, but they, they couldn't do. And they, he, they went back and they plotted how to entangle him and trap him. And then they sent their disciple to him along with Herod, Herodians. Um, You need to know that our enemy, Satan, plot. Even Jesus, Son of God, He's a creator. He doesn't stop. He doesn't give up on that. Even though Satan knows he cannot defeat Jesus, right? Still, he's using Pharisees, religious leaders to plot to trap Jesus to kill him. So he is spending time to kind of study about you and how to plot how to plot. Uh, plot how to really trap you and deceive you, manipulate you. It is easy to see why Pharisees and Herodian chose the Paul text as the bait for their trap. Um, if you kind of look into it, uh, it doesn't matter what side Jesus took, he's going to be in trouble. They plotted really well. And they already, you know, are so victorious when they're thinking about the result. Let's look into their question. Um, their question was, tell us then, Verse 17, why do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If you, if you say yes, then you're going to be in trouble with the Jews. And if you say no, then Herodians, they're going to say what? Oh, I'm gonna arrest you because that's not legal. Like you know, even um, there, are, they had to pay tax to Caesar. So they kind of thought, oh, this is perfect trap to arrest or get rid of Jesus. When Jesus said, oh yes. You need to pay tax 
to Caesar's. Then, you know, there was a crowd in the temple, right? Jesus will lose his credit from the crowd. That's what they thought. So, um, he's going to use, our enemy is going to use perfect tool to manipulate you, deceive you, and trap you. Um, what kind of tool that he is using? Uh, first one is they're almost like an actor. Those who ca came to Jesus. If you look at um, verse 16. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, they called Jesus teacher, which is the most respectable name that you could uh, call a person. Um, this is really respectable um, way to call a person. And remember, this is disciples of Pharisees, right? They came to Jesus and they called Jesus teacher. And then they said, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion. For you are not swayed by appearances. So they're acting. I'm, I'm showing you great respect to you. You are true. And you are teaching the way of God truthfully. You know, they are using very uh, beautiful and charming words to Jesus. Teacher, you are true. We all know that. You teach way of God truthfully. Not only that. It, and you do not care about anyone's opinion. You're so firm and steadfast. Right? You're bold. You're confident in your teaching. You do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. So be honest. I know you are true. You teach the way of God truthfully, and you're not going to be swayed. So you are so strong, and you are straightforward. Satan comes with these charming, attractive words to you. Um, Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. So when we are living in this kingdom of the world, Satan comes to you with this, sweet words, charming words, reasonable words, and come to you. They try to set him up with this. And if you think about Pharisees, they are using even enemies. They're enemies. They're, they, they're haters. Herodians. They don't go along with one another. Not at all. They are, go against it all the time. Because think about Pharisees, they are the religious leaders, right? They hate Rome. They hate Herod. But Herodians, they support Herod and even Rome. So they do have totally different political view and religious view. But they come together to go against Jesus. Because their common enemy is Jesus. 
So it doesn't matter. They could be united to go against you. Satan will set this up for you. Pharisees opposed the Roman Paul text for several reasons. First one is they did not want to submit a Gentile power. Think about it, Gentile, right, Romans. And Caesar was revered, like and feared, as a god. He was considered as divine. So Pharisees couldn't take it. And they had better uses for the money than to give it to Rome. So there are tons of reasons why they don't want to pay the poll tax. So they're against it. And Herodians, they love to pay the tax. So they are in totally different opposite side, but they come together to go against Jesus. If you think about it, disciples, they're religious, right? Herodians, they're not religious. They're polit political. But religious group and political group, they got together. Go against Christianity. Go against Christ. So we are living in this kingdom of the world, and Satan used this tool with the name of unity. You know, WCC, World Council of Church, we talked about it, right? Satan is using that um, to get rid of Jesus Christ, uniqueness, uniqueness of Jesus Christ. Under the name of unity, under the name of peace, they try to get rid of what? Uniqueness of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And they embrace all kinds of folk religions, right? They had a general assembly meeting in Busan, I guess. They invited shaman to perform. World Council of Churches. So this is church community, right? They embraced what? Folk religion like shamanism. They embraced that because they need to have unity. So Satan comes to you with this kind of really fancy words, unity, peace. No discriminations. It's good. But behind the sin, Satan is trying to get rid of Jesus. If you look at Luke's account, Luke doesn't mention the Pharisees were Herodians. He just called of them spies. <laughs> he said, they sent their spies. So there are spies. Satan used spies to manipulate you, to deceive you, to let you down. And even using God's word to challenge. Is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar or not? They're talking about the law. God's word to even Jesus, Son of God. And He's going to come to you to challenge God's word. If you don't have clear and correct understanding of the truth, God's word, He's going to come and manipulate you. Like I told you, uh, if school gives you some kind of assignment, you need to write a research paper. Then you need to research. You need to read tons of articles and um, resources here and there and books, magazines, right? And then you study and you get to know that field, right? That subject very well, even though that's not truth. Even though you don't want to believe it, 
right? But you spend time to study about that to get an A. But we don't study God's Word. We don't spend time to read God's Word at all. Even though we believe that that's truth. That's the reality that we are living in right now. And then Satan will challenge you. Do, do you know? Do you know the scripture? And then he's going to use, I'm going to tell you, he's going to use various aspects and areas and issues. Is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar or not? And you don't know how to answer that. You got confused. And you compromise. Ultimately, Satan is trying to block Jesus to complete the messianic mission. Satan is using disciples of Pharisees and political group Herodians to block Jesus to complete the messianic mission. That's the goal and purpose of Satan. So he's going to use this scheme. And he's using hot issue. Financial matter. Since money, financial situation and matters are so important, right, in our daily lives. The reason why I study, we study well, try to get a better grades, because we want to go into better college, better universities. Why? So that we could get a better job. It's all related to what? Money. Finance. And Satan is using financial matters. For Jewish people, paying tax is related to their finance, financial situation. They pay tons of taxes. They had a religious tax to Jewish authorities, and they pay, they're paying tax to Roman government, income tax, custom duties. So historian is made that the total tax burden of the Jewish people must have approached between 30 and 40 percent and maybe even higher of their income. So it's not a uh, simple issue. It's a hot issue. They don't want to pay the tax. It's related to their you know, daily lives, how they spend their money, right? But their burden concerning the paying tax is really great. And people were there to try to hear Jesus' answer. This is the reason why Pharisees chose this issue. And Satan uses this kind of issue to make us to fall into confusion and Compromise. In your daily lives, he's going to come up with various kinds of questions concerning financial matters. A uh, long time ago, uh, one of the cellar members came to me. Pastor, I, I used to uh, have a hard time to pay tithe. You know, if you know my financial situation, it's not easy for me to pay tithe. A pay or well, offer tithe. Even though I know that it's all from God, uh, I was not able to pay or uh, offer tithe. Um, I was so thankful that uh, that person was so honest with me. We do have that issue. At least for me, when I was young, even though uh, I was not, you know, having great situation with finance, 
um, at least, you know, I spend money to buy meals or have, you know, time with my friends. At the time, I'm using those monies, the amount of money. At least I need to offer God more than that. Um, their question is, is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar? It's a really sensitive issue. And what if Satan is coming to you concerning offerings? Offering tithe and other offerings. How are you going to answer? Oh, look at my situation. I've seen a lot of remnants where young people, they spend tons of money to buy food, to, have, you know, to hang out with, with friends, but they you know, offer offerings not that great. Why? What was the motivation? You know, pay, you know, offering tithe is you acknowledge who's the owner, who's the source of finance. We're, we are not able to really answer the question, is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar? Satan is using financial matters. This is really um, pla uh, practical and realistic. Religious matters. Like I told you, Caesar was not just political leader, but he was considered as a divine. Um, paying tax to Caesar is not just you know paying him, but is to worship him as divine. That's why if Jesus answered yes, and he's going to lose his credit. From the crowd. Satan comes to you with this religious matter too. Um, you know, there are tons of times that we uh, compromise our faith. Um, you know, not only this, but this one too. If that is related to your faith, confessing your faith, uh, we often compromise. Political matter. This was the reason why Herodian were there. If Jesus stands against Herod or Caesar, he'll be rest. So Satan brings these financial matters, religious matter, and political matters. Like in these days, um, this is really strong, even among Christians. We need to know that we need to draw clear distinction between state and the church. State and church. So... Uh, I learned from my professors. Um, it's not healthy to mention about political matters in the church. As you know, individuals like you, you could have, you could hold certain political views. Nothing wrong with that. When you come to the church, you don't share that. That's not a gospel. That's not a truth. Not at all. We don't want to fight against it, one another, right? So state and the church is totally different thing. So don't bring state issues into the church, no. In these days, Christians are so sensitive. In Korea, in you know, United States, we experience division because of that. Satan used these hot issues to bring division 
and deceptions. And he was a historian, uh, Josephus. Josephus, um, he wrote about revolution of Judas of Galilee, who lived through the destruction of the temple. He said, the great Jewish historian, Josephus, says that in 66 AD, it was the this, this same attitude towards this taxation problem that started the revolution of 66 AD that ended in the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So, destruction of Jerusalem, Israel, right, caused by this issue of taxation. So it's, it's really hot issue, really important issue. And then Pharisees brought that up to trap Jesus. Expect. Our enemy will bring this hot issue to you guys. You need to have spiritual eyes to discern. You need to unmask them. This is what Jesus did. If you look at verse 18, but Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Jesus unmasked them. They were acting out. Teacher. You are true. You teach way of God truthfully. You're not going to be shaken by any other, you know, opinions. You're so strong. You're firm, steadfast. They're acting out. But Jesus said, you hypocrites. Why do you put me to the test? So you need to unmask them. Even though our enemy comes to you with this fancy words and compliments here and there to deceive you, to manipulate you, if you do not know how to discern, then you cannot fight. So unmask them. You hypocrites. They were the hypocrites. And they were trying to test him, right? Trying to trap him. That's what we need to be aware of, smile of this world. You know, this world will give you really sweet candies to get rid of your spiritual eyes. Forget about your spiritual identity, all the privileges and blessings that God has given you. This world will give you smile and sweet candies to forget about that. And Jesus clearly drew distinction. Um, I think since we're living in this, you know, two kingdoms, I want you to really know how to draw clear distinction. Some people. Um, take this uh, their own ways. If you kind of think about it, you might have some kind of four options. Pastor James Boyce uh, divided into four options. Some people take God alone as an authority. Some Christians have embraced when the state has become excessively oppressive or corrupt um, in the early church, they don't take state uh, authority. 
So uh, they try to get away from that. And you know the Christian monks, right? They try to leave uh, outside of the world. And they try to become holy, um, not getting along with the world. Separating themselves from all social contacts and living. So that's the one of them. Second one is Caesar alone as an authority. So most likely uh, non-believers are holding this view, but some uh, Christians are holding this view too. Secularism. It was the way chosen by uh, Jewish leaders at the time of Christ. Um, Jewish leaders chose Caesar's instead of Jesus. If you look at John chapter 19, verse 15, they shout out, we have no king but Caesar. So if you need to choose one or the other, these religious leaders, Jewish leaders, they took Caesar, not Christ. And third option is going to be the authority of God and Caesar, but with Caesar in the dominant position. Uh, this one is kind of your kind of scary cat. Of course, you are you, you know you acknowledge both of them as authority, but you see Caesar's authority is more dominant, right? If God's authority is recognized. Acknowledged, it must be supreme, right? Because God is the one. But you recognize, you acknowledge God's authority, but you put more weights on seizures, the world. Why? You're afraid of what you're going to have, what you're going to, you know, get out of the world. That's why many Christians, they're making compromise. Oh, I need to, you know, get an A, so I need to study. I cannot spend my time to, uh, to with God, you know, to talk to Him. You know, we compromise our time, our values with the world. Oh, I need to promote. That's why I need to spend more time at work. Of course, you know, I need to go to church. I need to spend my time with God, but I cannot do that. That's the one. This is the third option. If you think about Pilate, 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 uh, he knew that Jesus was innocent, right? But he was afraid of Caesar. So he just, I'm not going to you know, get involved with this. But he just ended up, uh, let Jesus be crucified. The last one is the authority of God and Caesar, but with God in the dominant uh, position. This is kind of biblical Christianity. And this is what James Boyce said. And Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. John Calvin said, quote, we are not only subject to the authority of princes, princes, who perform their office towards us uprightly and faithfully as they ought, but also to the authority of all who, by whatever means, have got control of affairs, even though they perform not with of prince's office. You know what I'm saying? You need to see the state as God's ordained. Um, what do you call it? Magistrates. So you need to honor them. If you see Biden, just honor them. Honor his office, what he is doing. Uh, even though he's not Christian, he doesn't you know, have Christian view, it doesn't really matter. 
um, this is what it means. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And at the same time, Christians should also be um, aware of um, what state is doing. If it is opposing our view, our stance, then we need to clearly and strongly say no to that. I want you to kind of uh, look into the word render. Jesus used this word uh, to answer that question. He said, Therefore, render to Caesars the things that are Caesars, and to God the things that are God's. If you know that the word's meaning, it means to pay back. It's kind of debt. You need to pay debt to him. You need to give it back to Caesar. Uh, it's about obligations. It's about responsibility. It's not something you have choice. You know what I'm saying? She just used the word. Render to Caesar things that are Caesar's. When disciples of Pharisees when they ask, is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar? In their thoughts, it's a gift. I could use this money for something else. I don't, I don't want to give gift to Caesar. But Jesus said, no, it's not a gift. It's a debt. You need to pay back. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Do you understand? You need to pay tax to United States. Why? You receive protection, right? They are doing so many things for you. You know, we are using freeways and police department is running for protection and security. And we need to pay tax, pay back. This is debt. This is what she just said. It's not a gift. It's not a donation. You know what I'm saying? In the Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 23, section 1, we read, God, the supreme Lord and King of all the world, had ordained civil magistrates to be under him over the people for his own glory and the public good. And to this end, had armed them with the power of this word for the defense and encouragement of them that are good, and for the punishment of evildoers. So that's what we need to render uh, to seizures. What is seizures? And render to God the things that are God's. So we need to make a clear distinction between these two. So you need to pay tax. You need to go to school. You need to pray for the leaders of this country. Um, but who is a supreme authority? God. If they are going against the scripture and God's word, then we need to go against it. I like this phrase, sentence. Caesar's image was on the coin. God's image is on us. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Cheetos were asking, what's the image on the coin? Caesars. Then you need to pay uh, Caesars too. What is Caesars? But his image, God's image, is in, on us. So we need to uh, pay tax to God.
I think this is kind of really complicated or confused issue, but Jesus cleared that. Don't just be amazed, but transformed. If you look at the verse 22, when they heard it, they marveled, like they were amazed by Jesus' answer, and they left him and went away. If they are amazed by that, they need to follow Jesus, right? But they left, went away. Satan might let us be amazed by Jesus' teaching or scriptures. Don't be just amazed, but be transformed and follow Jesus. It is not enough to be amazed at Jesus. It doesn't want our amazement, but commitment and whole life. And he wants the, your fellowship, your submission, your acknowledgement that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, as you are living in these two kingdoms, you need to have spiritual discernment. Uh, Satan comes to you, comes to you, with various tools and really amazing tools to deceive you. Keep that in your mind. And we're gonna learn from Jesus Christ. This is how He defeated them. Let's pray together.